What's up YouTube, Keith Gaines back at you again with another Air Force video. So this is my friend Heath, we worked together for about a year. Um, he's in, he was in the Air Force as well, he did a four year contract, ended up getting out of the military, not re-enlisting. So today we're just going to go over the benefits, um, the, how the schooling works afterwards, and getting a job afterwards if you're just planning on making the military a temporary choice for those benefits. So you want to go ahead and tell them a little bit of how the process worked getting out of the military? Alrighty, so first off, knowing the out processing uh, process as a whole, um, if you're going in for, you know, just temporary like I did, you're going to want to get that process knocked out as soon as possible. I'd say when you get to that year mark right before you're getting out, you want to actually start out processing, which they'll give you a ton of lists, a ton of different requirements that you want to get done. It'll all be outlined for you, so nothing's too crazy. Um, the hardest thing is actually catching people in, in their offices at the right time just to get everything signed. I think that was probably the hardest aspect for me, um, you know, getting the right signatures when need be, which is why you want to start at that year out mark. Um, I'd say probably crunch time, like three months is like the bare minimum, like if you start after that point like it's going to be pretty hard to get all your stuff done um so with the four-year contract when were you required to like re-enlist or when, when were you required to make that decision after like what was the break or make point in that um they'll they'll let you re-enlist basically up until your last day as far as i know um your last day of, of contract um because it's it's literally just a signature uh as as far as i'm aware um, they told me at any time when out processing, you know, I still had the option like, hey, if you know, if you decide to change your mind last minute, like all you got to do is, is re-enlist, you know, sign this and we'll get you set back up. Um, so as far as I know, you have basically up until, I'd probably say like your final two weeks um, to, to re-enlist, to re-sign. Uh, I may be mistaken on that, so don't, don't take that as, at face value, but definitely do your research. Um, but as far, as far as I'm aware, you can ba basically re-enlist towards the very end of your enlistment. So a lot of people want to join the military for like the post 9-11 GI Bill, the Montgomery GI Bill, those GI Bills for college. Um, the way that that works is um, once you get out, your post 9-11 GI Bill, you if you do a full, full time college, whatever your state requirements are, whatever, you can use your post 9-11 GI Bill. And in the military already, if you live off base, you're gonna get a housing stipend. And whenever you use your post 9-11 GI Bill, they're gonna give you a housing stipend for college. And they're also gonna pay up to the how much, Keith, you know? Uh, it's 100% a, it's a in-state tuition. Okay, and then your Montgomery GI Bill, um, if you do a part-time college, they're gonna give you up to like 64,000 is the max. So I think like 1,777 a month is what they split that up into. You can Google the uh, direct requirements or else it'll be down in the description below. I'll have exactly like what, what the amount is and everything like that, but it's a pretty good average of what I know so far. So um, out, of, out, of, out of everything out processing, what do you think would be the, um, like the number one thing that you would tell people to that are joining the military to make it temporary, getting out, what to expect, what they're gonna go through and everything like that. So when, when you're in the military, especially when you make it known that you're getting out of the military, um, you will get treated differently. Um, you know, that, that's, that's just how it is when they know you're not staying in. Um, you get, you get kind of treated differently. Um, you know, they'll kind of use scare tactics to, to make you think that you have to stay in the military just because, you know, that, that's how the military is. You know, you have all these great benefits, why not stay in, right? Um, my personal reason for getting out is that I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. Um, you know, that was my whole reason. Uh, a lot of people stay in and they hate their jobs, you know, but they stay in just due to the benefits. Maybe they have some type of financial issues, which is the reason that they have to stay in. You know, just, just make sure you're, you're smart. You know, if, if you're going into this knowing that, hey, I want to do my four years and get out just like I did, don't be swayed by anything, you know, especially if you're not passionate about the job you're doing. You will have the opportunity to cross train depending on what it is you do want to do, um, you know, but that's a whole different topic entirely. Um, 
So yeah, at the end of the day, whenever you join the military, um, getting out is just like getting out of a normal job, but I mean, you gotta wait until your contract ends. And another big thing about getting out, tell them about how um, they, you're still in the inactive reserve. Tell them about that. So basically, once you get out, you're not officially out of the military. And what I mean by that is, yes, you don't have to go back to doing your, your military job, but um, depending on what type of contract you sign, four or six years, you're gonna have an, an inactive status after you get out to where they can call you back in depending on the situation. Like, let's just say, for example, we go into you know war. Uh, you know, in a, in a war time, they can call you back into the military if you're in that inactive status and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what you signed for. That's in your contract. It's non-negotiable. Um, so that, that's basically what that inactive status is once you get out and you can do your research and find out, okay, if I, find a, if I sign a four-year contract, this is how much time left I have in my inactive status. Uh, I believe for me, um, it's, it's four years. So if you, if you sign a four, you got four afterward. Um, you sign a six, you got two afterwards. Mm -hmm. So eight years total is what the Air Force's enlistments include. Um, I mean, that's just how it is at the end of the day if they need you. If, they, if they're gonna do a draft, they're gonna draft people that already know what they're doing first. And then if they really need be, they're gonna draft people off the streets and everything. But you, know, you just gotta think with your head, like, is it really smart to draft people like civilians before they draft prior military? And that's why the whole inactive reserve thing is there just in case, I mean, anything ever kicks off and we need more people. But that's about it for the video, guys. Um, if you have any more questions about getting out of the military or the process or the benefits afterwards, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. Um, I'll get back to that as soon as possible. So you guys take it easy, subscribe if you want some more content, like the video, share it with your friends if you think it'll help them out. See you later, Keaton Gaines out.